Gravitational Field and Surface Gravity While the force between two objects can always be computed by using the formula for gravitational force, it's sometimes convenient to consider one mass as creating a gravitational field and the other mass responding to that field. So we start with the equation here, and then we pull out this m2 over here. And we're going to say that m1 is creating a gravitational field. So it's right over here all by itself. okay? And then we get rid of the m2, and we say big M here. This means there's big mass generating this gravitational field. Then there's this little mass that wanders into it. And we're going to call that equation the weight equation. It equals m times little g, not big G, which is gravitational constant, but little g, which will be big G times the mass of this big object, divided by the distance squared of the little object from the center of the big mass. The magnitude of the gravitational field created by an object, in this case big M, varies from location to location in space. It depends on the distance from the object and the object's mass. Gravitational field little g is a vector. Its direction is always towards the object creating the field. That's the direction of the force that a test mass, which is our little m here, would experience if placed at that location. In fact, g is the acceleration that a mass would experience if placed at that location in space. Planets, stars, moons all have a gravitational field since they all have mass. That field is largest at the object's surface, where the distance from the center of the object is the smallest, when r is the radius of the object. By the way, only the mass of the planet that's closer to the center of the planet than you contributes to the gravitational field. So the field actually gets smaller if you tunnel down below the surface. For example, if somehow you were to get here, which is impossible, the only part, the only part of that sphere or planet that is causing this gravitational force is between you and the center of the planet. Everybody else doesn't count. So again, here's our little g. Compute the surface gravity, little g, for the surface of Mercury. Its radius is 2.4 times 10 to the 6 meters, and its mass is 3.3 times 10 to the 23rd kilograms. We list our givens for Mercury. It has a mass here and a radius here. Here's our gravitational constant, the universal gravitational constant. And little g is big G times big M divided by r squared. Put in the numbers and we find that the surface gravity, or little g, for Mercury is 3.8 meters per second squared. And you can compare that to the surface gravity for Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Example 2. Compute g for the surface of a planet whose radius is double that of the Earth and whose mass is also double that of the Earth. We're given that the mass of this planet is twice the mass of Earth, and its radius is twice the radius of Earth. So what do we know about the Earth's surface gravity? Well, g sub e for Earth is g m sub e times r sub e squared, and that's 9.8 meters per second squared. The gravity of the unknown planet will start with g m over r squared, where big M and big R are the mass and radius of this new planet. But what is m equal to? Well, m is equal to 2 m e, so we plug it in there. And what's r equal to? 2 r e. We plug that in, tier, in there, do the math, and we get 2 g m e over 4 r e squared. Now, what looks familiar here? This guy right here. So we want to isolate that person. That's where it is within the parentheses. And 2 divided by 4 is a half. So we keep a half over here. And what is g m e over r e squared? That's 9.8 meters per second squared. So a half of 9.8 meters per second squared is 4.9 meters per second squared. That's our answer.